I was kind of curious is like what's your relationship to like fourths these days <laughs> like I was like I, I, I was thinking is that it, how, is that oud tuned in fourths um it is tuned in fourths mostly yeah it's kind of like the guitar and it's fourths uh across mostly and then there's a third in there so but the third is on the lower strings so okay. it's like C F A D G C so you have the third between the fifth and the fourth string right yeah that's the way I tune it yeah, um, yeah. so um, yeah I mean it's like a guitar in a lot of ways um, but you know you're not thinking like quarterly necessarily because chords are really hard to mm. there, you know um, but uh, yeah th like 
the, this, the the way this is tuned, which is pretty much a guitar without the bottom two strings, it just has, I think just this really open sound to it. So I think that's kind of where I was starting from. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, the, the oud is like, um, I think more melodically, you know, because the, the music traditionally is more like melodic ornamentation, you know. How does how is that impacted? I mean, we're not playing. Or yeah, you're not playing right. here, but I was, like was the first thing that kind of came to mind. I was like, oh man, like, yeah. It's fourth, like, what's the how's the like? Because I remember for a while I was tuning in fifths, and it, it kind of changes how you think about navigation. You know, yeah. Uh, even just like the the shape of phrases changes because mm -hmm. like with fourths and fifths, you sort of have a different amount of notes per string as you traverse them. So like right. the yeah. like all that kind of changes. But um, yeah, I mean, with that, like, how does it feel having that third? It's hard for me to picture, you know, because like mm -hmm. guitar, like that's sort of towards the top and it's kind of like a... Right. It, like it's up there, but like for you, it's like... Um, it's on the lower part. Yeah, it's um, it's different. I think of the instruments very differently. Approach them. I think I started doing the oud in a way. It was just kind of like, I hit, you know, like you hit a wall with an instrument or something and I was kind of bored and I didn't know what to do. And I thought the oud was a way to connect because it's fretless that I could connect more to the note like you know i always kind of like envied horn players because i always thought like they can sing they have to be able to sing the note or whatever whereas like the guitar is more mechanical like you just <laughs> do whatever and you're like we're you know it's all you can it's all in the it can be all in the fingers right mm. we're, they tend to say we play too much or whatever so i thought like if i played the oud like you know i'd really hone in on that my ear and stuff and in some ways it did um but then you get into other you know not traps but like you know habits and things like that on the instrument so um in a lot of ways it is very guitar like like some of the same shapes that you play and um like uh but but the thing that th that throws me off about that bottom part is like there's a lot of things that you do on the oud where you you go from higher higher range to lower range and like you like you'll hit a bass note like you'll make play a melody on top and then you'll hit a bass note on the bottom and it was just always weird to have that one string be off slightly cuz I'm like oh yeah like you know on a guitar or something like you know your G whatever lines up with the first string like you know your bass note is there um and on the oud it's just like a little off like or like the octave becomes four frets or whatever at some point um but I don't even play octave shapes necessarily. The, the octave shapes are weird, definitely. Yeah. That, that's what I guess maybe that's what it is. There's like a lot of things where, yeah, you're playing a phrase and then like you play like maybe a G, E, A, D, G, on this, right? E, A, D, G, B, <laughs> B, E. I'm like, okay, yeah, this, let's say you play an E there and then you, you might, for emphasis, play, play, play an E on the bottom, right? And then if you're doing that like on the second string and then you want to go to the fifth string for the octave, on the guitar, you have an idea of where that is, and it's a, it's a fret off. So yeah. the, things like that. And the thing is, when I first started, I tuned C E A D G, C E A D G B E, C E <laughs> C A D G C. Sorry. Basically, the fifth string could be either an E or an F. Okay. And so when I first started, my first teacher start like I started with the E, so you'd have that open E string. But then I went and I started studying with. Uh, there's this like Arabic music retreat in Western Mass that I uh, start I went to once a year. It's like great, and they do like a traditional Arabic tuning with the F rather the, so that you have the F as the open sound, and it does resonate different mm. differently, you know. And they were like, "Why the hell? Why are you tuning into E?" I'm like, "I don't know. I just learned it from." And uh, and so then I started playing like that, and it just basically changed those bass notes on the bottom. So does that make it what intervallically what changes them? Because I, I so oh sorry. So the uh, instead of going the bottom two strings, instead of going C to E, which is the third mm -hmm. there, which is the way I learned, it goes C to F. So you but have then a it goes F to there, F to A. Okay, so there's so a the third, third the, gets shifted yeah, to the okay. between the fifth and the fourth string, as opposed to the sixth and the fifth string. Yeah, and so that does change. It changes the way it resonates because, like, a lot of the stuff. So I, it made sense when I started doing it like that because some of the macombs that you play in have an E half flat in them a lot of times, mm -hmm. and so if you have an E half flat, but then you have an open E string, I feel oh, like yeah. the resonance would be. But once you have that fourth, the F there then you know it makes it does kind of make more sense i think if you're because you're playing a lot of times in these keys that have e half flat b half flat like d bayette which is a macam is d e half flat f g a b flat and so the e was a little weird but you know i i go back and forth sometimes between those 
two tunings depending on, on what it is that I'm doing. I did when I did that show, I um, the Broadway show. It has like some music that is written clearly with with some with Ud in mind, but some that were just like a musical song, right? Mm. So like a Broadway type musical, and some of those, it's like oh play this was like totally non idiomatic for that instrument, you know. So and and actually for that show we tuned it to differently than I normally tune the Ud. We tuned back to the E. So whatever. It's just, it, you know, I think that the difficulty with that instrument, again, for me, hasn't been so much the tuning issue. It's just, um, yeah, like, I think it's the ornamentation really yeah. is what makes that music so interesting, you know, because the, the melodies are pretty, just the bare bones of it are straightforward, but it's mm. like all the ornaments you add to it and nobody plays the tune one way, you know yeah. what I mean? Everybody plays it like, there's a melody and, and everybody is sort of like referencing the melody, but everybody's doing their own thing. But you can't go out and just do some crazy, <laughs> wacky stuff. You gotta yeah. always think of the melody, you know? Um, so it's, it's, been, it's been cool, you know? <laughs> it's funny because I remember like back in, you know, we were in university or whatever, the, one of the classes that we were in together, one of the improv classes that was, you know, that's for the jazz thing, you, you yeah. play the head ornamental, but it, it feels like it, in a jazz, in a more straight ahead jazz context, that's a little bit more um, lightweight ornamentation, whereas my understanding of this kind of music, it's like the ornamentation is, is a much more yeah. involved part of it. It's not, you know, just not doing like a did it, dip, but, but, you know, like, <laughs> no, it's, it's not it. just like a little, you know. No, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of like sequences and a lot of like, uh, I mean, I know these all have terms too in classical music. Like, if you have a note here and you want to play that note, but you get, you know, yeah. that instead, or you know, or like, a, I think one of them is like a mordant. Yeah, or there's a, a bunch of that in like the like Bach. Bach, Baroque, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think you know this music did develop around that time too, like Ottoman court music and stuff like that, which is kind of where, at least the stuff that I've studied, sort of has its roots in that, and hmm. so it's very ornamental. Um, and so that, that's, that's the interesting part. That's the part that I'm still, and also the improvisation aspect of it is very different from like Western music or whatever, you know, like jazz, for example, you know, mm. which like looks at, well, it's interesting because we're, yeah, the older I get and the more I try to like dabble in jazz stuff, that's true. Really like focus on the melody. Like you'll never like that start with the melody, you know what I mean? But I think in school they they shove a lot of theory down your throat. Mm. Like you gotta learn all these scales and all these chords and these dense harmonies and like improvise from that. But then you end up sounding like you're just playing anything, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not actually playing the song. But um, with the, what's cool with the doing the, the oud stuff and the Arabic music, you start with the melody and that's, mm. you know, and then from the melody you, you stray away and then, you know, you can do a lot of things, but it's really focused on the melody. Then there's taksim, which is like the open-ended improv, which is, not necessarily open ended. It's got its own paths and things mm. like that. And that that part has been. That's still like I'm trying to learn that. You know, that's like a whole right well, different so, approach. You know? And is is that uh, something that is done as a a whole performance? Right? Like like would you go to a concert or is just that? Or is no, this, uh, it's, it's like an aspect of it. There's always like, yeah. There's always oh soloing like that taksim like mm -hmm. where the the song opens up and sort of the soloist will take you, it could be a short phrase within a, or a short section within a song, or it can be, yeah, a long kind of meditative sort of song, improvisation. Mm. Um, but that's like, uh, that is that is central to the music, you know, that's mm. kind of like, you know, where people are like, okay, what are you gonna say? You know, like, set the mood and like, you know, um, where are you gonna take this makam? What paths are you gonna, there's a bunch of different routes and things like that and like, Tradition. That's the thing with with the macombs. It's it's not so much like scales in music where we're like, you know, in jazz, like oh, I'll play the you know locrian over this chord and you get a cool sound. You know, it's like, it's like okay, there's a macomb and it has a sort of tradition to it and a habit of going to this next macomb and shifting here and shifting there and you have to kind of reference that a bit mm. to for people to like take you seriously you know what yeah I mean? like, well it's part of i guess the identity of what that is it's like, yeah. yeah 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 so um so i don't know I've, you know i go back and forth with different things like you know like i'm spending more time recently playing guitar and kind of getting back into some kind of jazz stuff or whatever mm. and, and then this type of free playing is fun too because it's you know it's really 
I haven't done this in a while, which is which is cool to do this again. Um, but you know, this is where you're just open to try anything out, you know, and uh, everything's kind of free, you know. Hmm. So I like that. Um, like, I think I started off thinking more in terms of because it's been raining the last couple <laughs> days. So I think we started with a nice kind of vibe of just like raindrops or something, mm. you know. Like I was trying to, I was like, oh, shit, I want to try to do some yeah. like harmonics and stuff here. Um, but you were playing some nice chords on that. Yeah, know? I mean, one of the things, because in, in the context of, of like the melodic playing or the oud and all this kind of stuff, the the situation that we're in here and that we're, I mean, it's, it's a, like a baritone or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's still a ukulele. So it's like, yeah. it's like you're up there, mm -hmm. you know, and this is like up there as well. Like there's no, there's no bottom end here. Yeah. And there's no, I mean, I, I, I don't know what like a melodica conventionally does, but um, there's no established roles. Mm -hmm. And also the... Like if we both were just doing melodic contours, it'd be kind of like it, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's two instruments where there's not an established. Like if you had a bass, right, there would be a clear thing. I mean, it could obviously go anywhere, but like the yeah. the register would define a certain kind of behavior. Yeah, you know, or a relationship to like a much high pitch, a higher pitched instrument. You right. Know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, whereas here, like I, I found myself leaning towards chords at some point just to kind of pad out because you had a lot of rhythm and texture mm -hmm. um so i was like okay I'll, I'll pad this out and just fill in some kind of mm -hmm. harmonic shapes yeah just in there and then towards the end it got a little bit more um, angular and stuff but th that was a uh, some of what i was thinking and just like let the rhythmic stuff yeah kind of come from there yeah um which i think made for some cool moments yeah this does like i you do want to just kind of like jam on this <laughs> you know uh like when i when i was working in a music store in chicago like i started working at a store right when the uke craze hit and like mm. it was every day i was selling these like, I was <laughs> like what's the deal you know but they do sound cool and this one in particular too like and and yeah the baritone which th this was popular i think a lot of guitarists in the mid 20th century started on uke you know and then like some famous you know because they were just like they sold them at sears and stuff and you know um but they have this they have a nice yeah that you want to just kind of I tried to do some melodic stuff at times that it was like, well, I, don't, I, I don't know, you know, like not shred, but I'm not a shredder or anything like that. But I definitely feel like this just lends itself well to like rhythmic kind of stuff. And then mm. even the kind of sound you get on the top, like sometimes, you know, this mm. kind of like that, you know. Um, um, is, is any of that kind of stuff a, a thing in like... In, in, in oud music? Yeah, yeah. Percussive stuff? Probably. I haven't seen too much i mean not traditionally i would say um but like uh you know i I've, I've seen some stuff i mean like i have uh i haven't found too many modern players that i necessarily um not that i don't dig but like i tend to i tend to go into the older stuff like i try to i mean and or traditionalists really i think you know i just because like there's it's so deep i think and I tend to do that too with music. I tend to like try to go into the past and, and find the, the the you know get the traditional side of stuff, but um, I haven't seen too much. I know that there are, you know, there's different. There's like people that have seven string ouds or whatever, and like bass oud even, and like or like higher strung ouds. Um, but um, like the the modern some some of the stuff there's people like try to mix it with jazz i haven't heard anything that's like wowed me yet you know what i mean like it's funny because when i started playing i'm like yeah i'm gonna i want to it'd be cool to do some like oud jazz you know like mm. play some oud t some tunes on and uh i just kept getting deeper into the traditional stuff i'm like i'm like i can't I'm not gonna jump into that just now. And then it was hard too. I was like, Dude, this is hard. Like, man, playing just playing the thing in tune was a challenge, yeah, yeah. you know. But I do want to like try to play. I guess I feel more comfortable with a string instrument like this, or like guitar to just be like free to whatever. Hmm. With the oud, I have I've yet to be in a situation where I do that a, a lot. I've done it a little bit when I was in Chicago because there's a lot of free scene there, but like. Um, I think it would be cool. I like I thought about like doing listening to like upright bass or cellists and trying to f Okay, like use them as a model rather than say like maybe there's some cool jazz oud players I just haven't heard any that mm. really actually are convincing, you know, I think there's a lot of like Flamenco influence and sort of neoclassical kind of thing. That's just not my thing but like it'd be cool to like I don't know to do like walking baseline kind of stuff on the oud or something mm. and see if it works, you know or like 
kind of a more free jazz approach to that, you know. So it's it's but like I said, like I still feel like I want to get the the hang of just basic like the stuff that I studied was like traditional Arabic classical music. But then you have like Turkish music, it's a whole thing, and the Greeks and the Armenians mm. and they, they and there's just a pretty vast world, you know. So um yeah, I'm just like constantly trying to, to learn <laughs> more yeah. about it. And also for better or for worse, once you start playing an instrument like that, it has a lot of baggage to it culturally and stuff like that too so like you don't want to misrepresent things and mm. you know like i mean i have arab american heritage from way back that i i wasn't even connected to but through the music you start people start seeing you like that and mm. then you like you get accepted into a community which i thought was pretty cool like i mentioned just this arabic music retreat that that is run by it's simone shaheen and his family they run it and you know they're palestinian and like those are my the teachers you know that i learned from and so i'm learning a particular style and tradition so i try to like obviously respect that but i've done gigs like in chicago where people just come up to me and start speaking arabic and i'm like uh <laughs> and i'm like no i'm like colombian but my great grandparents yeah. and, and whatever and it's cool and then you know by the end it's like oh no no you're syrian yeah for yeah. sure yeah, <laughs> oh yeah let's you know so like, okay cool thanks like i always appreciate that yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like to be like accepted like that you know mm -hmm. it's cool but music can open doors like that you know what i mean so just uh try to be respectful about it that's, yeah. that's what i want to do you know but um yeah man like um, I, I wish I was like thinking like, sh can I bring an oud here so we can yeah. jam? You know, um, I'll have to go out to Portugal and like yeah, bring yeah. my electric. I do have an electric one too, which is cool. Like yeah. that, you can run it through like pedals and things. I'll like set that. up my my baritone uh, melodic. Actually, they do make I think like a bass melodic, but it's not very yeah. Um, well, yeah, what are you spent? What are you playing most these days? Uh, like, drums, drums, and electronics drums? is 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 closer to the thing or like. Uh, electronics and some kind of acoustic source often drums yeah. or percussion yeah I do like this in the mix quite a lot um, for well for when there's pitch stuff there but mm -hmm. also there's a lot of texture and, and uh, clank and all the air and wind kind of stuff it, it's a it's a nice Swiss army yeah go to you know right. like like I mean for, even for for travel at the moment like it's one of the few things that I would bring just because I, I can do it in a couple of different contexts right and um, uh, but yeah, no, this this still gets some use. Uh, but yeah, mostly it's like drums and objects and electronics. Do you do like? Because I mean, you were when we met, you were like a classical pianist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I know that's yeah. like your your background. But like, do you ever get into no, that? I don't, I don't. I don't even own a piano. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's this Wild. little thing, and then I have like a little like a, a MIDI keyboard, not bigger than it, that lives in my closet for eight months of the year. That it comes out when I teach a certain class, yeah. and then goes back to the closet. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, did you just want to get away from it? Or um, like... I mean, pianos are expensive. Yeah. And so like moving, actually when we moved to the UK, I had a piano for a while. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved again, I, I didn't. And then, mm -hmm. I, then I don't care enough to mm -hmm. get one. And even if, I, if I, even if someone was to give me a nice one, I don't think I would want it. Like yeah, I yeah. wouldn't want to occupy an amount of my house for an instrument like that. Yeah. I would like to have something like a Rhodes or a Wurlitzer, like one of those kind yeah. of things. Because right. they sound cool and I think I could use more in the kind of music that I make now. Right. But those, particularly in Europe, are very expensive. Really? Not that they're massively cheap here, but like, because yeah. they're all the ones that are there are ones that people have taken over. Right. And that then, and, and now we're decades later. Oh, so, right. like, all the ones that are there are like, you know, restored or, or in shit condition. But like, they're like, yeah. like four or five thousand and up. Wow. Kind of thing. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. yeah. Yeah. So. Do you ever feel that like you've, like, you spent so much time on that instrument that like you've, do you feel you've lost that technique or that like you like have, I, I'm 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 kind of projecting what I feel yeah, yeah. about myself. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's because like would get like now you know if I want to take oud seriously, which I do, like, and then recently I started playing darbuka and and drake too. It's like the, you add another thing. It's like you, there's more to work on. Yeah, yeah. And so like my guitar playing will suffer. Yeah. And then sometimes I go through moments where I'm like, man, if I would have just stuck with one thing, you know, it'd be mm. great now or whatever. But like, do you feel regret sometimes, or like, do you feel like I lost that technique, or like? I'm just doing some other stuff now and that's... Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of that. Like, the fact that I've, I've played, because all of these are sort of still in the kind of string-ish yeah. world, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, so, the, like, I've kind of jumped ship from the key-based world. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a certain amount of technique, because particularly for playing guitar as well and drums, like, that, like, becomes remappable, mm -hmm. you know? Like, okay. this kind of stuff would be very different. Like, I, I would be right. shit at trumpet, but, yeah, like, yeah, for... Yeah. 
um, yeah, like another type of instrument, the object of manipulate. There's a certain amount of stuff that can get repurposed. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I thought about a long time because I, I always, many decades ago, felt that I was able to do weird music well because I was able to do normic, normal music well. Like, yeah, because yes. that's how, you know, you go to school and you know, this is kind of what pushed into you. And then, that kind of, you experience with the oud, like, if you commit to something, the, that shit is hard. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like that thing deserves that yeah. level of attention and time. So at some point it was like, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to get back into like doing some rudiments or scales or like just as like a freshen up. And I was like, I just, <laughs> that time I'm like, dude, I'll put that time into the shit that I, I want to be doing, you yeah. know? Yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. rather than like putting a lot of energy into stuff that was peripherally relevant uh -huh. to what I was doing, the thing that I was doing had enough depth right. that I just would commit more to that. Yeah. So um, for sure, this shit is is rusty. And mm -hmm. like I, my I, my guitar is probably rustier because sometimes when I teach, like you know, in classroom mm -hmm. teaching, like there's a piano and you sit and play a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a guitar, like my Steinberger, it lives with a friend and like because it's mm -hmm. easy to tour with. Mm -hmm. And the guitars I have at home are, are not massively comfortable, so I, I don't play right. guitar as a thing at yeah. all really. Yeah. So that feels weirder just because you know it kind of leaves you a yeah. bit. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I, I've gotten good at other stuff. Right. You know, I mean, there's a certain amount of key stuff that, that's still there. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would I would struggle to sit down and play some Chopin or something. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I still feel somewhat, like, I'm. there's very little here that I am I feel unable to articulate. You right. Know? Yeah. I, I, but then again, we're not playing like, you know, crazy bebop where I'm like, baby, baby, yeah, you know, exactly. like, you know that, that's not needed under fingers. Um, yeah, yeah. But like the stuff that like. You know, there's still a bit of agility there that that can be called on if needed. Yeah. But yeah, but for me, that that was a really like ground level fundamental change of like the shit I want to do is hard, mm -hmm. and that deserves that because it's so easy. Like like with anything, like as a musician, it's like it, it's the the sitting there and doing the practices we were taught when we were young is mm -hmm. like the oatmeal of like, oh, sure, you gotta have your vegetable. <laughs> like it's it's easy. Okay, yeah, I'll just do. Sure, I'll do it. You right. know, yeah. and you can do that. But like. Where do you, you know, if you want to do that, that's great. But if you want to do something different, yeah, that shit has not necessarily the same equivalent, but it has that um, thing that you can unpack and pull layers and, and right. do yeah. and go further with it. Right. Well, what you said too is like be able to articulate what you want, right? That's ultimately the goal, yeah, right? Yeah. So like if you're doing scales and stuff, like it should be to the service of something. And yeah, I yeah. think when I started, I was very like at some point as a kid, like I for better or for worse, I was like, I need to learn theory and I need to learn scales. And then I just put everything into that or just like focused on that. And then you, as an end to itself, you know, and like, be like, well, then where's the music? You know what I mean? Or how to, and that's a whole other, other thing. And then you realize that I don't need necessarily all those skills. Like, what are the skills that I actually need to do what it is that I want to do, you know, or say it, what it is that I want to say. And that, for me, that's still why I do some of that stuff, you know mm. what I mean? Because, like, uh, but as you get older, you're like, I, there's less and less time, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, it's like, There's man, more and more scales, you know? There's more scales, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and, like, yeah, I mean, that's, you have to kind of limit yourself, you know? I, I don't have the answer, I don't know, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. still, like, I still struggle with it. But mm. I hate that feeling, too, it's like, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to work on this, and then, like, I need to spend time, say, like, on harmony or whatever scales, and then you do... And then you like, even you put good time into it and then you realize, oh man, it's like you turn a corner and you're like, oh wow, there's so much more yeah. to do. Like how much further, like I can't keep doing this thing or like <laughs> I get, you know, so it's like there's, it's infinite in so many directions. Yeah, yeah. So you got to like, you got to figure out, I guess that's what having some kind of goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, well, actually I should ask you then what's, yeah, what's your goal? Like maybe if I you can see like an yeah. ethos or something or like a, like, what is it? Is it? Being able to improvise freely, feel comfortable, express your... I remember, actually, man mentioned that, like, I remember you years ago saying, like, I never felt music was about expressing myself. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting, you know, because so much of that in art school or any kind of school is about our like, yeah, yeah. culture in, in general is, oh, you can, you're an artist, so learn to express yourself and everything. But it, what is it for you about doing this? Yeah, right? I mean, on, like, the instrumental level, I feel like I've... It was like riffing off what we were talking about, like I've learned and practiced enough that like I will like with I still do practice rudiments like drum shit because that's the one that is the lowest of of my historical skill levels. Um, but for most of the kind of stuff that I do, I feel like I've there's enough there already. Okay. Like I, I'm not for want of uh, 
technical augmentation. Again, as I said, I do practice drums because that one, that one, I do want to get the level of that one up. Right. Um, but beyond that, it's 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 other things like like, um, I mean, in a greater sense, like like sharing community, mm -hmm. like like philosophical underpinnings of art. So even just this mm -hmm. thing that we're doing is is part of mm -hmm. that kind of thinking. Right. So uh, zooming out of not me individually making stuff. I do individually make stuff and I like the stuff that I make and all that, but more like how, how do I think um, art functions in the world? What's my place in our, how art functions in the world? Like, does it matter? You know, like mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So more thinking about that stuff mm -hmm. and then um, following parts of my practice or things that I find interesting often to support that in some capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that I do that I just find interesting and follow them and they're, they're, uh, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have a, well, very little has a goal and like as, a, as an explicit goal. Yeah. But very some of it can like not relate back to a certain thing or not obviously relate back to a certain thing. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think, like starting to do these kind of sessions, it was, well, for one, People don't talk about improv so much. I mean, mm -hmm. people. Some people do. There's a there's a European thing or British thing specifically where like you don't talk about improv and it's like a mm -hmm. like that's a, a fancy boy thing. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> so so coming up around that. But so, but I think like that stuff is important. Mm -hmm. And specifically, the it's not all like unicorns and magic. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like, oh, we can live in Miles Davis. And it was like, it was like, it was in space. And it's like perfect and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, it's not. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it was Tuesday for one or whatever it was. You know, and <laughs> right. it was just like, but like the, the culture surrounding it and the thinking behind it mm -hmm. enables that to happen mm -hmm. on a Tuesday or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not so much this like, this grand, like, I guess it's like a Western thing. There's like this great master fountainhead right. of a mind, the genius that produces perfect art fully birthed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the like illusion that it is taught. Yeah. And it's easy to teach that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for one, it doesn't work that way in any capacity, in any dimension, no. in any culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, negotiating that. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I often ask myself, like, what am I doing this for? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and it's good to, yeah, it's good to hear other people's, you know, reasons for doing Because so much of what we're, uh, it, what we encounter is like, how are you going to make money? Yeah. How, what kind of gig and then like as you know you have to adjust your playing for the gig and for the work and stuff like that and mm. and and then you know you get caught up in stuff like that but i mm. like yeah, i've always liked hanging with you and, and and Ange too because like you guys were always about just like the, the art you know mm. like and, and not just about it like performing it but like talking about it and everything yeah, yeah. like that like that that group that we had back in Miami. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was super fun yeah um so that all that is like super super important and is easily lost in the world of like even within musicians especially if you went to music school where it's just like you got to find gigs you got to work yeah you know so i've always like wanted to have i want to be like a working musician but sometimes it's like maybe i just need a day job and then yeah and then something completely different you know yeah like i mean I've, I've been lucky in that you know, teaching for a living pays me enough to live yeah. my life in the way that I want to live it. Yeah. And I enjoy it and I have have some aptitude for it. So that, that's kind of worked out. Right. Um, it would be different if that wasn't the case. I, I don't know what I would do. And, you yeah. know, we live in a capitalist society and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. things are complex. You know, right. It's, um, but I, I do feel very lucky that that's, that's the case, that yeah. I don't have to really think about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I ask you how you feel uh, about, like, just specifically improvising? Because I feel how do you play and do you play and not get emotionally attached to what you're doing at the moment? Cause I feel this is a happens to me, uh, you know, where it's like you're playing something. Oh, that sounds like shit. And then you're suddenly depressed. Like this is me personally or, or like, damn, that sounds awesome. I'm a badass. Yeah. <laughs> or like, look at what I'm doing. And it's so, sometimes it's that feedback loop is yeah. like not helpful. Mm -hmm. Right. When you're playing, because I think ideally it'd be cool to just be right just yeah, just do, yeah. and to communicate you know and then because yeah. so many times that's been wrong with that where like i'm like that sounded awesome and if i record <laughs> it i'm like oh that was yeah. not good you know or, and vice versa oftentimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost exactly the opposite yeah, where yeah. i felt terrible after a gig hmm. and i'm just down on myself and then i listen back and i was like 
that, that was kind of cool. Easily mm-hmm. like months or whatever labor. Yeah, but yeah, how yeah. does how does that does that affect you while you're playing? Um, not too much. I mean, there's there's within the moment of a performance, um, there's like a very wide window in which it doesn't affect me at all. Mm-hmm. And then if something like if something breaks or something like that, I become aware of it. Or something like really like unusually unexpected happened, then I become aware. But for the most part, the the self awareness isn't focused on that. Like that 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 part isn't really engaged, mm-hmm. um, and it's more just exploring what's happening, the relationship. How, what am I doing? What are you doing? Like, and it's not like an intellectual distance, but it's not a um, emotionally charged. I okay. guess you know, like it, it doesn't resonate that way. And again, be, because of the like feeling kind of comfortable with the things that I play, unless those extremes are met, I don't, I don't, I don't think that right. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it, sometimes it does happen. But it, it, it's yeah, like like shit. This like that thing on Polly. It's like oh fuck, I should have you know. And then and then you you know <laughs> then you get to... yeah. Right, right. Um, but yeah, uh, outside of that. Um, but then again, it's it's always well, more often than not in a more open exploratory uh, semi contextless. I mean, it's con- everything's contextual, but. Um, like you know, we sat down to play. Like, are we going to play? Is it going to be melo- like? Is it going to be harmonic material? Right. Is it going to be, mm-hmm. you know? And it, and it kind of was in the domain of of that, but mm-hmm. it, it could have not been. But right. I don't know. And I yeah. I specifically didn't be like, oh, what are we going to do? Right, you right go, same. It, yeah. yeah, you know, like so. You know, so there's an aspect of of that stuff I find interesting. And like as we negotiate, it's like, oh, okay, we're doing that. Okay, we're doing. That. You know. Mm-hmm, so like I, I kind of am busy with that stuff as opposed to thinking. Yeah. You know what's the stupid, stupid, stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on in my head now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think it comes from as well, like like playing weird instruments and mm-hmm. and stuff. Like th- there's no equivalent. You know, yeah. I'm playing a microphone with feedback on a snare. Like th- there's that doesn't exist. You know, mm-hmm. like so there's it, how bad can it go? I mean, it can go pretty bad. <laughs> let me tell you. Bad. But like, but it, there the 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 history of of that music mm-hmm. and also the history of being taught on that music, like, you know, there's a different thing of like, mm-hmm. if I was sat at a piano and playing some Bach or something sure. now, right. there, there limits, would be more of that. Range, like yeah. that would, that would come with a lot more qualification and sure. thinking and like teachers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with a lot of the stuff that I do, that's not there. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Although that being said, I did have like, you know, when we were kids or whatever, I don't know if you had like a melodica in music class in school, like an elementary school. I think school. we had bells, but yeah. I, yeah, we did have melodicas too. Yeah. But like a recorder or something yeah, like this. Yeah. So like this, this is of uh, that, kind of exposure of instrument for me like yeah. uh, you know like mm-hmm. when i bought this one specifically i was like oh yeah i remember from elementary school i had this kind of thing and it because this uh, came in like this little plastic blue yes, case i remember which, yeah. re- which i remember very much from mm-hmm. in elementary school we would take those little blue cases out yeah, and you would take yeah. it yeah. Actually, yeah yeah i do remember that so um, now i don't carry it like i don't keep it in that because that case is kind of like falling apart but like yeah it, it's of that kind of instrument that was a side tangent thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. nice um, yeah, shall we play a bit more? Yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.